Hey viewers, welcome to another game of the Casual Pro Gamer, which is in fact my 1000th game. And I wanted to do something really cool for this game, but I couldn't really find anything, so I decided to do just the uh, result video of the weekly challenge. I have something planned, but it will take quite a long, t oh, well, quite some more time to, uh, yeah, to get working, and. So you'll have to wait for that, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll announce it when it comes out, and who knows. Patience. So anyway, we are seeing the half ma mana Leblanc, and she's going to try to uh, to stay above the, uh, in this case, 150 mana point. And once she dips fall. under it, she cannot use spells. That was the rule. And well, the reason for doing this, as we go through the uh, first game, a little bit on uh, double speed. But the reason to do this is because if you watch the uh, the pro matches, so like CLGs, uh, streams, anything like that, you will not notice anything like this. But if you really watch it and you watch these people play AD carries or something like that. They're almost always above half their mana. Unless it's really late game, but they will always keep like 200, 300 mana available just in case. And that's exactly what the point of this exercise was to show you that it's really important to stay uh, or to keep your mana. And so that you actually see that you don't need the mana early on to do all of this harassment. Because very rarely will there be a kill because of it. And the only reason there will be a kill is because people uh, on the opposite team just screw up. And you really don't want to be one of those guys that needs his enemy team to screw up to win. You want to be someone who can win no matter what he uh, enemy team does. So we see some some harassment going off, and yeah, mainly the uh, well, both of them are just last hitting, are keeping uh, track of the minion's health. Okay, they're not doing the best job ever, but that's not the point. The point is that your early game should be about some harassment, but mostly getting the minion kills, and. As soon as you get that, as soon as you understand that really early game, there's no reason to go for these uh, these crazy ganks, then you will become a better player, because then you don't need to rely on your opponent screwing up. Because if you get to the late game and then expect to get kills, or, well, mid game I guess, uh, you're a lot better off, because once you get to the uh, the later game, you will have better items, you will have more mana, you will have everything you need. But early game, just try to be safe. And yeah, people keep uh, saying that, uh, or asking me, and it I think it has been on my channel for at least a hundred times. Uh, the question, why do I do these uh, low ELO games? And, well, here's one of the reasons. You can see in normal games, uh, so the, the, the games I actually uh, get on my channel, so the, the games where people don't get 20-0 as a score, but you can see that they actually run out of mana really quickly. And uh, make mistakes that are solvable by doing very easy things. And if you just look at high ELO matches, which is cool, I mean, I like to watch high ELO matches too. But you don't see that unless you know a whole lot about the game. And most people who are watching this channel, yeah, they really don't know enough about the game to extract from the high ELO games what they need to to get better at this game. So it's then it's purely uh, entertainment. And what I'm trying to do is to teach people what to look for. And one of the things to look for in the next high ELO match you, you watch 
If you're watching an AP carry, watch the mana. Watch how many times they actually harass. Because LeBlanc here hasn't harassed too much. A little bit in the beginning to uh, to keep the opponents away a little bit. And um, for the rest, yeah, not so much. Because she doesn't need to. She has uh, kind of a support tanky character in her lane. I'm not sure what he's building, but it doesn't matter anyway. Um, the whole point of it is that I wanted to show that you can actually do this without going under half your mana. And half your mana was kind of an arbitrary number. I got a, a game from Rice by Simon, who has a lot of videos on my channel. Uh, because he keeps sending them in and he has some nice uh, games. But yeah, he, di he did rise and every now and then he would dip under the half. But I don't care, that's not the point. The point is to keep a reasonable chunk of your mana available for escaping or to get a kill. And if you don't have that, then you just die. And that would be, yeah, unadvisable, to say the least. So anyway, this uh, he this decay ninja, uh, yeah, he kind of has a not so very good team. And as you might have noticed, there have been a lot of kills on the uh, the enemy side already, but it's it's going to get a lot worse. So even though he's trying his best with the, the half mana. By the way, he solved the problem by just getting uh, clarity. And he only used it like twice in the whole match. So that means that if you do a normal game, so without the restriction of only being able to cast spells when you're above half your mana pool, then... Oh, and he bought an extra uh, mana crystal, I guess. But if you have all your mana available, you should have no problem with your mana at all anymore. After you've done this, if you keep that in mind, the the strategy you had here, and just use that that knowledge to, well, basically do better, then you can you can go a whole match without going under, well, like ten percent of your mana, or at least well being able to uh, to cast your spells all the time when you need to, and that's the point of this exercise. You need. Sometimes you need spells to be available, and then you won't have mana. And that happens so often to my viewers, <laughs> that that's why I, I did this one. And unfortunately, because many people have been asking me why the weekly challenge stopped, I um, had a lot of people telling me that this was a great challenge, and they wanted to participate, and then I get two people sending in videos. Well, each. One, one each. And as I said in my reminder video, um, this video was actually sent in a few hours after I posted it. Because this guy just got the point. You just play a game and instead of doing your normal harassment in the beginning, you do less harassment because then you stay high mana. And once the game progresses, you get more mana, so it doesn't matter whether or not you, uh, you harass that. So now that it's later game, you can harass all you want, because you're going to keep enough mana available to get away in this case, so to, uh, to use your W, or even your W and your ultimate. And as you can see, he's just staying above the limit, and yeah, that's just amazing. I know it's very hard to do, so my head off to you, sir. No, I've tried this, of course, and I've tried it with, with several characters because I actually noticed that the real good players, they, they don't use any spells on the minions. And I've said that, I think, about 200 times already in videos, that you shouldn't use spells on minions to kill them, especially early game. And uh, there are, of course, exceptions, and one of the exceptions is the uh, uh, the enemy heroes. Or an <laughs> enemy. Uh, energy. Because if you're an energy hero, you don't have mana, so it doesn't matter whether or not you use the skills, as long as you have enough energy left 
to uh, use whatever skill you need to. It really doesn't matter too much. But all in all, the AP heroes uh, and well, any hero that uses mana, that you need to learn to manage it. And Ash is a very good example. I've seen uh, low ELO, a lot of Ash is going for something like um, uh, Tear of the Goddess first. So their first item would be Tear of the Goddess into Mana Mune. And that is just awful. I mean it doesn't add anything to your Ash and it, it only helps you really early game. So this, um, uh, what's he called? Nocturne is actually the one winning it for the enemy team. He is completely legendary already. He was 8 0, now 8 and 1. And um, yeah, he's going to continue, of course, because if you're 8 and 0, it's same as 6 and 1. Then you have so many uh, items that, depending on what the rest of your team does, if you. Uh, yeah, if you get the right items, then you can win easily. But LeBlanc, of course, uh, yeah, isn't Nocturne. Nocturne can uh, take the whole team on, and LeBlanc is more of a, uh, well, one opponent uh, target system. Now, she can only uh, uh, get one champion at a time, and it's very hard to kill multiple champions. Getting killed once again, but yeah, it really doesn't matter, it's not about the eventual end score. Although, he's going to do, or she's going to do, a really good job in uh, in kills as well. I mean, being 6, 2 and 1, you're already doing a good job. And by the time you're losing, you cannot help uh, dying every now and then to uh, defend the turret, or to at least try to get the, uh, the advantage back. And yeah, the, it, it's it's not like a whole lot of things are going to happen in this game, and that's really not the point. The really the only point was to show that it can be done. And although it's mainly a challenge for the early game, in the late game you still need to keep enough mana available to you to uh, cast all of your spells. And if you can cast the spell more than once, you want to be able to cast it more than once. And if you do too much harassment, it's not going to work out for you. You're not going to be able to get the opponents. So we see the whole team dying here. Follow them a little bit. Well, could we actually follow them? Because the uh, the camera is locked onto LeBlanc. But they are losing their first inhibitor here. And it won't be too long before they uh, lose the game. Well, lose the second inhibitor first. But you can see that even though I set the mana restriction, the only problem area was really early game. I mean, by now, he went into Rod of Ages, which is an, an item I can always recommend. Uh, especially when you go Catalyst first into Rod of Ages. That is just awesome. It gives you survivability, it gives you extra mana. It means that you never run out of any of the stuff you need early game. And of course, in the later stages of the game, you will get even more health and mana. And, well, making it even better. Of course, the AP is nice as well. But it's not what the item is about. If you want to go AP, you're probably going to go into other items. An ally has been slain. An ally has been and slain. yeah, don't really have a lot to say otherwise. So we'll just fast forward a little bit. Really fast forward. But the whole point of this exercise was to, uh, well, to experience what it's like to be a really good player, mana wise, because this is just mana management. The fact that you set it to 50% like I did, or you set it to uh, 300 mana, 200 mana, 
that's really not the point. It's just keeping in mind that you have mana and that you need to be careful with it. Well, let's uh, watch this one, this fight because that's actually entertaining. They're completely behind and they still get an ace. But yeah, they're not going to be able to do anything with their uh, well with their ace because there's just yeah two inhibitors down, uh, a lot of super minions, a lot of normal minions pushing their turrets. And by now the uh, enemy champions are back, so yeah. So anyway, dying once again, and now it is time to lose. So thank you for sending this one. I mean, I really appreciate it. I watched it actually at normal speed the first time, but it's not really an interesting match, and it's not the point anyway. The point was to try to do this without getting all of your mana involved. And I think you did a great job here. So um, thanks for sending it, and um, yeah, I'll really have to think about continuing the weekly challenge, because I probably won't. So anyway, I'll see you next time. Chee-chee.